Hi, I'm Aaron Brothers, Director of Music Ministry at Dixon United Methodist Church. The story of Daniel in the Lion's Den has been a favorite for as long as it has been told. It has inspired musicals, television shows, and movies. The story is gripping. The first time you hear it, you bite your nails, wondering if God will rescue Daniel from the mouths of the ferocious lions. One whole night in a den with man-eaters. No way Daniel will make it out alive. But God comes through. An angel closes the lion's mouths, and Daniel lives to praise the God of Israel as he has always done so faithfully. That's the glossy Cliffs Notes version. Daniel is God's good and faithful servant. So though it doesn't always happen, it isn't that surprising that God intervened and changed Daniel from a would-be martyr to an example of how faith can save. It's the lead-up to this lion's den situation that is the interesting part to me. How did Daniel end up down there to begin with? If you know the story, Daniel was brought before the king of Persia with a prophecy of his demise. King Belshazzar, son of Nebuchad that Nebuchadnezzar, of fiery furnace fame, learned nothing from his father's mistakes. Belshazzar was arrogant. He threw a huge party and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. God, Daniel interpreted, the literal writing on the wall was that God was bringing Belshazzar's kingdom to an end. Belshazzar was killed that night, and Darius rose to power. Darius was a good and benevolent king. Persian kings of the time were generally very accepting of foreign religious traditions. Darius loved Daniel wholeheartedly, giving Daniel more and more political power and responsibility. Daniel did an amazing job and distinguished himself from the rest of the leaders in the country. Darius's other appointed leaders and counselors started getting jealous of all this power Daniel was gaining and decided now was the time to undermine it. They tricked Darius into signing a law that would make it illegal to worship anyone but Darius for the next 30 days, knowing full well Daniel would remain faithful to God anyway. So Daniel gets caught. The king is like, wait, what? And it's into the den of lions for Daniel. This is, of course, a gross oversimplification. The king was distraught and tried to get Daniel out of it, but he had signed a law. Daniel 6.17 says, a shot and placed over the entrance to the pit. The king sealed it with his own ring and with those of his princes so that Daniel's situation couldn't be changed. Even a king can fall to the pressure of his peers. Instead of just using his authority to rescind the law or make special dispensation for Daniel, he put his seal on Daniel's tombstone, making him complicit in the perceived fate Daniel would suffer. The writer of this story makes a point of letting us know that Darius wished aloud for Daniel to be saved by his God, and that Darius was awake all night, fretting over whether or not Daniel would make it. Darius had a good heart, but when it counted, he allowed his silence to write what could have been the end of Daniel's story. We are living in some seriously tumultuous times ourselves. For a lot of us, with good hearts, it is easy to say nothing when we see injustices happening around us. We don't have ill wishes for those who are suffering. We even hope to see them rise. But if we remain silent, we become complicit in their suffering. We set our seals on the stones that keep them from rising up. God gave us each a voice to scream from the rooftops for those who have been rendered voiceless that we become allies on a path toward mutual justice, kindness, and humility, that we can put our seals on true and abiding relationships with God and with each other, instead of on each other's tombstones.